Today, I said I would go over some of the basic skills of transcribing. I would appreciate that. We'll watch some secretaries on the job. Is there anything special you want to know before we begin? Mm, no, just whatever you usually teach. Okay, but keep in mind that this is an overview. There are many details that you'll have to pick up from practice in your secretarial studies and from actual experience once you're out on the job. I understand. Fine. Let's begin by seeing how Joan Carroll will transcribe the shorthand notes that she's just taken from Mr. Kiefer. We'll follow her through each of the steps of this typical assignment. Notice how she organizes her materials. You mean putting her shorthand notes next to the typewriter? And her letters close beside them. That's so she can refer to them both without waste motion. Rush items come first. They're noted on the right-hand side of the page, so they're easy to find. What does it say? Telegram. There's no address, but the number two will lead her to the letter she's answering. The letter is also marked two, and it has the address she needs. At Jones' firm, the girls type an original and one copy of Telegram. The original is for the correspondence file and the copy for checking against the phone bill. After Joan types it, she'll show the telegram to Mr. Kiefer and then phone it in to Western Union. What comes next? Another rush item. A special delivery letter. For the address, she'll note the number six this time, which once again leads her to the letter she's answering. Joan checks her notes for special instructions for this letter. Special delivery, enclosure. Just one enclosure and she has it. Now what? She skims through her notes, putting in any punctuation she may have missed during dictation, and checking spelling and grammar. If she has any doubts, she checks her reference books, which include an up-to-date dictionary, a secretary's handbook, and other more specialized references relating to her company's business. Occurred. That's a commonly misspelled word. Joan writes the correct spelling in longhand. Now she's ready to type. Her materials are organized so she can get the letterhead, carbon, and second copy in one motion. A simple trick of the trade that saves time and effort. The letters Joan types represent her executive and her company. A letter must be neat and attractive to make a good impression. Joan's had enough experience to know from the length of her shorthand notes about how wide the margin should be and how high up she should start. The date line ends flush with the right-hand margin. Always? No. Just for a modified block style, which is what her boss prefers. In block style, the name and address line up flush with the left margin. Then the salutation. This is one of a number of acceptable formats. Some offices center the date at the top of the letter and leave out the punctuation after the salutation and after the close. This is called open punctuation. A more traditional format does not have the open punctuation and the paragraphs are indented. Still another format the full block style has everything lined up with the left-hand margin, the date included. You follow whatever format your company prefers. She types fast, doesn't she? 
Her typing speed is good. Joan does about 50 words a minute when she transcribes from shorthand notes. That's about two-thirds of her regular typing speed of 75 words per minute. Many secretaries and stenographers transcribe at half their regular typing speed, which is considered good. Doesn't she ever make mistakes? Well, she tries not to. Errors can really reduce your speed. Suppose, instead of typing the line correctly this way, Joan makes a mistake. Like this. Now she must advance the roller and move the carriage to the side so erasure crumbs don't fall into the type basket. She puts an erasure guard between the original and the carbon paper so she doesn't smudge the carbon copy. Then she puts an erasure shield over the mistake so she can erase only the mistake and nothing else. She erases carefully, getting off all the ink but not tearing the paper. She might even have to smooth it a little. Then she must correct the mistake on the carbon copy. She uses a soft eraser for this. If there had been more than one copy, she'd have to follow through on each one, all for that one mistake. Finally, she has to get her paper lined up again and go on. Now, compare this with what she's accomplished in the same time not making a mistake. Quite a difference. Yes, accuracy saves time. When Joan completes the letter, she proofreads it before taking it out of the typewriter. If there's a mistake, it's easier to correct it neatly while the letter is still in the machine. This is the kind of letter her boss likes. It's placed just right on the paper. Joan clips on the enclosure and checks it off on the file copy. Then she'll type the address on an envelope and mark it special delivery. She'll make sure that the address on the envelope is the same as on the letter. Efficiency comes from a consistent routine and Joan tries to follow the same procedure for all the dictation she transcribes. It may be letters, forms to fill out, reports to do, or minutes from a meeting. These are double-spaced for editing by Mr. Kiefer. Often Joan has to compose things herself from just a few notes Mr. Kiefer has given her. He depends on her to follow the rules of good business letter writing to prepare work that reads well and has an attractive appearance. That's the goal of effective transcribing. Transcribing, as you probably know, is also done from a machine. Sally Anderson is familiar with this model, so it's easy for her to get it ready. Before she types, there are things to check. There are markings on the indication slip which accompanies each recorder belt to help her estimate the length of each letter. Do most machines have such markings? Yes. There are also markings to show her where corrections occur in the recording. Sally listens to the corrections for each letter before she types, so she'll be sure to know in advance what changes, if any, are called for. She gets instructions for each letter, too. And she follows them, just as she would follow instructions in shorthand notes. The main difference is that she has to depend on her hearing instead of on her sight. As she listens, Sally types. Occasionally, she stops the transcribing machine to catch up with the dictation. Is she stopping it now? Yes, with a foot pedal. She repeats any dictation she's not absolutely sure of, and corrects any obvious errors in grammar as she goes. Sally's learned to type steadily. This has come with practice. She can start and stop the transcribing machine without pausing in her typing. I suppose it takes a while to get used to the machine. Yes, 
and each machine is a little different. Otherwise, the procedures are much the same as in transcribing shorthand notes. I see. And that, I think, about covers the main points of transcribing. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope that this information will help you to become a competent secretary. Thank you.